function and functions. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to identify if the given relation is a function or not. And we're going to determine the domain and the range based on the representations or different representations of the given functions, like graphs, ordered pairs, and mapping diagram. Let's start. Relation and functions. So we have a given example in here. Given the domain the range or give the domain and the range for relation shown in the graph. So we have a given graph. First up in here, we will identify the given dot as an ordered pair. So the first dot in here, you can see the first dot. So the first dot in here is in negative two, positive two, check. And then we have also a negative one, positive one, the origin, which is zero, zero. And then we have positive one, negative one, two, negative two, and three, negative three. So these are from the graphs. So from the graphs, we wrote them into an ordered pair. Now we are going to identify what are the domain and what are the range. So to write the given uh, sets of order, we frequently use we frequently use a bracket, a kind of bracket, a curly bracket. So all those value of domain So let us first define what is a relation and function. A relation is a um, uh, is a set of two values. So for example, in real life scenario is a relation of a mother and son. So that's a relation, a teacher and a student, those are relation. As much as we have uh, two values, those are relations. However, not all relations are considered as functions. So there are also relations that are not, that are considered as non-functions. So that is our, one of the, our objective. We're going to identify the relation if it is a function or non-function. The first step in here, we're going to have the domain and the range. So we'll need to identify the domain and the range. After we identify the domain and the range, we can identify if the given relation is a function or not. So the first one in here, we need to identify the domain. What are the domain? So domains are, so domains are the sets of all x values or the first, the values on the x axis, those are the domain. Sometimes we call them independent variables or uh, x values or x coordinates. So the first one in here, we need to identify the domain, which is negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, 2, and 3. So those are all the domain values. Now let us talk about range. What are the range? So range are all the y values or sometimes we call them dependent variables because they are depend on the value of the domain. So range are also known as the Y coordinates or Y values. So to write all the Y values, same, we'll use a curly bracket. All the value on the order pair, the second number on the ordered pair are the range. So the first one we have positive two, or we will write them from least to highest. That is the proper writing or proper order on how to write the domain and the range. So in here, we'll start with negative three, negative three followed by negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. So that is how we identify the domain and the range. Again, take note, when they are given an ordered pair, we will use a bracket to write the domain and the range or to identify the domain and the range and make sure that your answer is written in a um, least or least to highest order. Okay, that is the proper way on how to write or uh, how to write the domain and the range. Next one. So for the next one, we have the relation and function given a table of values. So the table of values that you can see in here, we have the x. Take note that the x are the domain. The x values are the domain. And then we have also the range. 
which are the y values. So it is very easy to identify the dominant range if the given is a table of values. So we will just write them. So we're using a red font for the domain. So again, from least to highest, so we have negative three first, negative three, that is the lowest number, followed by zero, positive two and three. Okay, we're following their orders. Next one, we have the range. We need to identify the range. To identify the range, we'll start with the least number, which is negative two, positive two, and positive four. So there is no repetition on the value of the domain. Okay, to identify if the given relation is a function, make sure that there's no repetition or repetitive number on the value of the domain. Because if there will be a repetitive number on the domain, that will be considered as non-function. So for this one, for every x value, there is only one value. There is a one. Uh, there is a corresponding value for the range. So this will be considered as a function. We will give more example on the next slide. Okay. So for the next one, we have a relation. So a relation shows a relationship between two values, as I defined it a while ago. So a relation is a relations a relation it shows a relationship between two values like for example the value of the x and the value of the y okay so now not all relations are considered as a function we have also what they call non-function but they are considered as relation a function is a relation where each input has only one output so take note for every value of x there is a value of y there must no repetitive value for the x so we have the first given example we call this one as one is to one or one to one so for every x value correspond to the value of the y values or the range so one correspond three two correspond four three correspond five and four correspond six so this one is considered as a function and then we have also what they call the many to one many to one is also considered as a function since zero correspond zero one correspond one two correspond two and negative two correspond four positive two correspond four by the way so even though four repeated twice but because it is under the range it doesn't affect whether the given relation is a function or non-function. So this one now is considered also as a function, okay? So as much as there is no repeated number on the domain, so you just focus on the domain when you identify a certain relation, if it is a function or not. Next, we have a non-function. Again, we have one to many. Look at the positive nine. It corresponds positive three and negative three. So we use positive nine twice, it's more than one. So therefore, this one is considered as non-functions. Take note of that, okay? Next one, we have many to many. Look at the positive three. It corresponds the five and the six on the domain. So that means we use positive three twice to partner or to correspond it to positive five and six. So if we repeat it more than one, so therefore it is a non-function. So take note of that, how to identify a given relation or yeah, a given relation as a function or non-function. So the next one, we have relation and function. So we, going, we are going to identify if the given relation is a function or not. But we need to answer the following first before we proceed in the third step. Okay, first step, we're going to, we will use red font for the domain. We will use blue font for the range and we will use green font for identifying if the given relation is a function or not. For the domain, let us use um, a red font. For the domain, again, we're looking for least to highest. Let us highlight them. I will going to cancel them out so that we can identify, I mean, we can easily identify the domain. The first one is we need to write the least or the lowest number. We have zero, followed by positive three, I think, followed by six, and then eight, right? So we have zero, three, six, and eight. So I will highlight eight since we, we use it twice. 
Okay, we have eight and eight in here. Take note of that. We use the domain, the eight in the domain twice. Next, we need to identify the range. To identify the range, we'll use blue font by circling them and circling them. Okay, so we'll start first with the lowest number or lowest value. We have negative two. Since we have negative number, we'll start with negative. Take note, okay? The, my student frequently asks me, is it positive two and negative two are the same? They are the same number two, but the value are different because the other one is negative and the other one is positive. So take note of that. They have different values and sign number, of course. The other one is positive while the other one is negative. So don't get confused on that. So negative two followed by positive one, followed by two, three, and five. So there you go, negative two, positive one, two, three, and five. So those are all the range. Now we're going to answer the third question. Is this relation is a function? We repeat the eight in the domain twice. So what is the answer? Is it a function or not? Perfect. It is a non-function. Okay. So it is a non-function because it choose the positive eight twice on the domain. Got it? Okay, so let's proceed on this uh, example number four. So for the example number four, we're going to use the red font for the domain. Again, let us highlight the domain first. These are the strategies that, that I am using so that it will not make me confuse what are the domains. So again, domain are the first value in an ordered pair or the X values. We'll start with the least number which is zero followed by positive three, five, six, and eight. So there you go. We have one, two, three, four, five, five numbers, okay? Next one, we need to identify the range. So the range we have, the range we have, let us encircle them, negative two, positive three, y, negative two, and five. So we'll start with negative two, though we use negative two twice, it doesn't affect the relation, if it is a function or not, since it is under the range. Take note of that. After negative two, we'll have positive one. After positive one is three, and then five. So there you go. So is this relation is a function, yes or not? Good job. It is a relation. It is a function. So again, it is a function. So we can say, we can say, yes, it is a function. And then the reason. So because there's no repetitive, there is no repetitive number. Okay, there is no repetitive number on the domain. So a while ago, we can reason out that we have a, re a repetitive number on the eight. We use positive eight on the domain. That is why it is a non-function. Okay, next, 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 next one. Let us have the next slide. So for the next one, example number five, we're going to identify if the given relation is a function or not. We can answer this one very quick. So the first one we have, we need to identify the domain. So the domain we have negative one, zero, one, two, and three. As I mentioned a while ago, it is very easily to identify the domain and range if the given is mapping diagram. You're just copying them or rearranging them first before you wrote them. Since you know that the rule is we must supposed to write them from least to highest. Okay, next one, the range we have three, Five, eleven, and twenty-one. Is there a repetitive number on the domain? Yes or no? No. So therefore, this is a relation. So let us use a green font, by the way. So yes, this is a relation. This is a function. Yes, this is a relation, and this is a fun uh, function. Okay. Next, for example, in number six, answer the given. So we'll need to identify the domain. So the domain we have from least to highest, negative 35. I will just highlight this one since we use it twice, negative five and zero, so that we will not forget that we use negative 35 twice, okay? I will just encircle it. Next one, we have the range. 
So for the range, we have one, four, and 22, okay? So we use negative 35 twice. And using the negative 35 twice, it makes the given relation as a perfect, not a function. So not a function. Because we have a repetitive number on the domain, which is negative 35. Hope that makes sense. Okay, please comment below if you have question. And then we have the slide six, of course. We believe in the saying that there's no retention in learning math without application. So if you may answer this part of the video, you may post it. And then when you're done, you may continue it. Just try to answer it on your own. You will identify the domain and the range. And then on the part two, you will determine whether the given relation is a function or not. And then in number five, we will identify the domain, the range, and the function given a mapping diagram. So hope you've learned on how to identify the domain and the range given an ordered pair and mapping diagram and how to tell if the given relation is a function or not. So let's continue on the next part of this lesson. Part two, relation and functions. We're going to identify the domain and the range given a graph and tell if the given relation is a function or not given a graph. So previously given a mapping diagram and order pair. So on this one, the objective is we're going to identify the given relation, if it is a function or not, given a graph. And we're going to identify the domain and the range given a graph also. So first thing foremost, we need to um, learn first what are the symbols that we are using on the graph. So you can see an open dot on the graph. If you see an open dot, we frequently use, okay, we frequently use a parenthesis if it is open dot, remember that. And then if it is a closed dot, we will use a bracket, okay? And then if it is an infinite, you will use again a parenthesis and the infinite symbol is this one. Sometimes um, on the arrow, we use the infinite symbol or the R symbol or all real numbers. So you will see a positive, you will see a positive real numbers and a negative real numbers when you see an arrow and also a positive infinity or a negative infinity. It's like a number eight, but they wrote number eight horizontally <laughs> instead of vertically. That is the symbol for infinite. Again, I will repeat, for the arrow, if you see an arrow on the graph, they frequently use the infinity symbol and the all real number symbol, which is the R. Okay, so take note of those symbols. Open dot is a parenthesis, close dot is a bracket, and then the arrow is a parenthesis. Then we're going to have, it's like a pretest. Okay, I will give you a few minutes for you to identify the domain, the range, and the function on the graph. Then we'll just get back on this graph later. Okay, please try it on your own. There is no right and wrong on the guessing the answer. And take note, the best teacher is your mistake. So if you commit mistake on this graph, it's still fine. And we may just go back and correct that mistake. It is better to learn on your mistake than learning uh, than without learning anything, right? So try to practice it on your own. One minute. You may pause the video and then play it again. So there you go. Identifying the domain and the range on the given graph. So we have a given graph in here. We're going to identify the domain, the range, and tell if the given is a function or not. So the first one, we need to identify the domain. Again, take note, the rule is in writing the domain and the range, we start first from least to highest. So from least number to highest number. So since in here, we will use a bracket. Oopsie. So we will use a bracket. I'll just move this one. Okay, so we'll use a bracket. So on the domain, you're looking only and focusing on the x-axis again. X-axis, x-axis, remember that domain x-axis. 
Is this point is considered? Yes. This point, yes, yes. Okay, okay included. Yep, yes. Yes, 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 and yes, and this no, this will be no. So we will start on the domain uh, on the both ends of the graph. So on this graph, the close that is used. So if we're using a close that, we're going to use a um, a bracket, okay? Because it is a close that. So we will use a bracket. And then if we will use a bracket, we're going to identify the number where it stops. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Since it is a on the left side going to the left, it is a negative eight. So we'll have negative eight in here. And then on the other side, it is a open dot. So we will use a parenthesis on that, on the open dot. And we'll count from origin one, two, three, four, five. So it stopped in positive five. So that is how we identify the domain on the given, or you may also use uh, inequalities, okay? But I prefer to use this one since it is very easy, okay? You may just use the X is um, greater than negative eight and less than positive five, less than, um, yeah, less than positive five. Again, I repeat for the inequalities, X is, um, great, um, greater than or equal to negative 8. However, it is less than positive 5. Why it is it has an equal to? Because of the close that. Close that means the solution is, uh, or that number is included on the solution. Open that, that number is not included on the solution. If you remember the topic that we have in inequalities, we use those open that and close that in graphing inequalities. Okay, next we'll go back how to identify the range. So for the range, we're focusing on the y value. So again, this one is included up to this point. This one, yes, 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 no, yes, and then no. Okay, so again, we'll start from the negative number going down, okay? So since it is a close dot, we'll use a bracket and then we'll count one, two, three. So negative three up to from the origin, positive one, and then parenthesis because it is open dot. Take note of that, <laughs> okay? So those are the domain and those are the range. You may also write your range in the as x is greater than or equal to negative three and less than positive one. Those are the value of the range, okay? Next one, we're going to identify if the given graph is a function or not. Okay, very easy. So if you remember the vertical line test, okay, vertical line test. So the vertical line test is a method that they use, okay, if the given graph is a function or not. So they will throw a vertical line like this one. In any point of the graph, if the vertical line test touch, touch the graph, okay, if this green line touch the graph once, it is a function. But if this green line touch the blue graph more than one, it is not a function. So look at those vertical line tests. When I draw a one vertical line test, it just pass through the blue graph only one. So therefore, it is a function we may say yes it is a function okay take note of that if it passed through the blue graph if the green line vertical line test passed through the blue graph more than once or twice or more it is not a not a function take note of that okay so next one for number two we're going to identify the domain and the range let me sum it up in here so that you can remember them, okay? Close dot is a parenthesis, open dot. Okay, that, let me correct that one. Close dot, it is a bracket. Okay, close dot, it is a bracket. Then open dot is parenthesis. Then same arrow is parenthesis. So on number two, it is a closed dot. 
Number two, it is a closed dot. So if it is a closed dot, again, for the domain, we're looking for the X. So the end point, we're checking the end point on the X axis. So from in here, this one is included. This two, this one, 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 and we stop on this one. Okay, so we will identify the domain since it is a closed dot. We will use a bracket on both ends because both ends are closed dot. And then we will count one, two, three, four, five, six. Going to the left is six counts. So it is negative six. And then going to the right is one, two, three, four, five, six. Likewise, it is positive six. So since it is a positive six, okay. So since it is a positive six, it is a positive six. <laughs> okay. Next one, we're going to identify the range. So for the range, again, we're focusing on the Y values from the top point to the lowest point. So it's top on the origin. Okay, that is the lowest point. So we start with zero now. Again, it is a it is a uh, bracket since it is closed that. Zero and then going up. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then positive six. So that is how we identify the range. Again, we may write our answers through inequalities, but I'm showing you the easiest way. Okay. Is it a function? Yes or no? Okay, we're going to use a vertical line test to test the given graph if it is a function or not. So look at, observe the, the green vertical line. Look at the vertical line. How many times does your blue graph touch those vertical green vertical line? Is it more than one? No, right? It's just once. So if it is just once, uh, what will be the relation? Is it a function or not? Good job. It is a function because it touched the blue graph only once. Each Green vertical line test, touch the blue graph only once. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, next one you're going to identify. So um, the domain, the range, and the function. So in here we have an arrow. Okay, is a different, a different one from the number one and two. So let us first identify the domain. So for the domain again, we're looking for the x. We'll start in this one, going to that one. So since it is an arrow, it is infinite, okay? It is infinite. It will not stop on the right side, okay? So we'll start first with zero, the origin. We're focusing on the X. So parenthesis and then zero, the origin. And then going on that direction infinitely, it will not stop. So therefore we'll use a positive infinite because it is going to the right positive infinite number so that is how we write it or you may also write your answer as zero to all positive real numbers okay or okay since it start with zero x is greater oh uh, yeah greater than sorry greater than let me correct that symbol so yeah it's right it's greater than greater than or equal to zero okay all numbers all numbers going to that direction are considered as domain included on the domain infinitely okay next we're going to identify the range so for the range we're focusing on the y-axis just imagine it's like a mouth of the alligator as it goes closer to the victim or to yeah to um to the food that he wants to eat the mouth is opening wide also so that means it is widening from bottom to up okay so that means all the y values positive and all the negative y values are included so the range is negative infinite, negative infinite, and positive infinite. Or you may write our answer as negative real numbers and positive real numbers. Or you may also write your answer as y is equal to the infinite, positive and negative infinite numbers. Okay. 
So that is how we um, that is how we uh, that is how we write the range, the domain, and the range. Next, we need to identify the function. So we will use a green vertical, vertical green uh, vertical, the green vertical line test. Okay, to test the function. If you see more than one point that pass through the blue graph, it is not function. So let me ask you a question. How many times that your vertical uh, line test, the green vertical line test, touch your blue graph? Good job. It is more than once or oh, it is twice look at the green vertical line test for every vertical line test it touched the blue graph more than once so therefore it is not a function no a big no it's not a function <laughs> okay then let us have this one so it's your turn it's your turn now to practice what you have learned can you identify the domain the range and the function of this one pause the video and takes time to answer the given. Then you may play it for you to check your output. For the domain in here, for the domain, we're focusing on the x axis. So stop in here. So for the domain, since it is a closed dot, we will use a bracket. So it starts with negative two going to positive four. And then for the range, for the range, it stopped in here, negative six, going to positive two. So again, both is a bracket since both ends on the y-axis is a closed dot. So we have negative six, list number first, and two going to positive two. Then is it a function or not? Let us use a green, green, green vertical line test. So for every vertical line test, it just touched our graph once. So if it touched the graph once, it is a function. Check your answer in, in what you have answered a while ago. For the next one, this will be the last practice. So we'll need to identify the domain and the range and the function. Pause the video for you to answer it on your own, then check your answer when you're done. Domain, we'll stop in here and it has an arrow. In the domain, again, let me correct this one. On the domain, it has both arrow. So as much as the graph is going down, it is widened up on both sides from left and right. So again, we're focusing on the x-axis. As much as your graph is going down, it goes both right and left. So it's widened up. It is, it is expanding on both sides from right and left. That means all the x values from negative and positive are included on the domain. So we have a negative infinite and positive infinite number for the domain. <laughs> now let us have the range. So for the range, it stops with positive 10. However, it goes down. Okay. So that means the range is... So we have negative infinite because all the negative numbers going down are included because of the arrow and it stops with positive 10. That is the maximum point or the highest point. So you may also write your answer as y is equal to, um, it is, uh, y is equal to um, less than or equal to positive 10 and greater than the negative infinity. So that is how you write the inequalities. So now let us identify if the given is a function or not. Okay, I will draw vertical line test, focus only on those green line. It just touch each graph, the purple graph one. So therefore this one is a function. If I'm not mistaken, this is what we call polynomial function, okay? If you have question, please start down on the chat box or in the comment box, I'm sorry. And then let me know if you have question or what more I can help you. 
So let us have a credit to the owner of all the uh, worksheets that we will use on the, that we've used on this video and also on the presentation. So I am um, credit to all of you. So we're very thankful that we have this very interactive presentations and uh, worksheets. So thank you so much for posting this kind of presentations and worksheets. So let us have this one. I just saw this one and I for I don't know uh, the website. I forgot the website. So it says it is a puzzle. So credit to the owner of this worksheet. It says, what did the baby porcupine say when it backed into a cactus? So we're going to determine it. Uh, we're going to determine which relation below our function and then find the number of each relation that is a function. At the bottom of the page, we're going to cross out all the letter below. When you finish, the answer to the title question will remain. So we're going to discover what does the baby porcupine says to the cactus, okay? So what is the message behind this? So first we need to identify if the given is a function or not. We will use red, a okay, red font for, for function. And then blue font, blue font for non-function, okay? So let's have the first one. So the first one, we'll check only the domain, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. So there's no repetitive on the domain. So therefore it is a function. It says that we're going to cancel out all the functions. So for number one, we're going to erase this one. So number one is not included. Next. Number two, we have negative seven, positive three, zero, negative two, six, negative six, and four. Again, there's no repetitive number on the domain, so therefore it is non-function. So for number two, we're going to cancel this one because it is a function. Next, let us have number three. So for number three, did you see any repetitive number on the domain? Yeah, I think so. We have two positive two in here. Positive two, positive two. So the domain repeat twice. The, uh, the domain, which is positive two, repeat twice. So therefore, this one is a non-function, non-function. So we will write the letter in number three. So we'll just encircle this one. Next one in number four, is there a repetitive number? On the domain, is there a repetitive number on the x value? We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there is no repetitive number, so it is a function. So we'll just cancel out number 4. Next, in number 5, is there a repetitive number, repetition of all those number? Same, no, on the domain. Check only the domain, focus only on the domain. There's no repetitive number. So number five is also not included. Next in number six, we have two repetitive number, the negative two, obviously. Okay, so the negative two and positive two, they repeat twice, more than one. So if they repeat twice or more than one, it is a non-function. So we'll encircle number six. Yippee, we already get two letters, okay? Now in number seven, so for number seven, if I will throw a vertical line test, there is no point that those red vertical line tests touch the points more than one. So every vertical line test, they just touch the point once. So therefore it is a function. How about this one? We'll throw vertical line test. So same, this one is a function. So let us cancel number seven number seven and number eight then we have number nine so obviously in here for number nine if i will throw vertical line test it touched the graph more than one so if it touched the graph more than one it is non-function <laughs> so it is non-function right or not a function okay so we will encircle number nine Next one in number 10. So again, in number 10, 
So if I throw vertical line test, it touched the point obviously more than one. So this one is a non-function. So we'll highlight it. So for number 11, number 11 will throw vertical line test. For every vertical line test, it touched the black graph only once. So therefore, this one is a function. So for number 11, it is a function. Next, for number 12, again, it is a function because every ver red vertical line test, it touched the black graph only one so therefore this one is a function <laughs> so that's it so now we're going to create a puzzle what did a baby porcupine says when it back into the cactus it's a four letter word okay it says h-i-m-a i see so it says hi ma <laughs> What a silly puzzle. Okay, so it, uh, the baby porcupine thought that the, her mother is the cactus. Okay, wow, yay, we got the puzzle. So it is, hi, ma. Okay, so hope you've learned. Hope you've learned in our presentation about this video. I know it's a long one. However, it is complete um, lesson about domain and range. Again, I will repeat the uh, objective. We identify the dominant range given different representations like graphs, ordered pairs, and mapping diagram. And we also uh, determine if the given relation is a function or not given, okay, given uh, different representations like same, like ordered pairs, mapping diagram, and Graphs. Okay. Let us have a recap of a certain points that you need to remember. Okay. Again, not all relation, um, not all relation is a functions, but all functions are relations. And another thing is to identify if the given uh, relation is a function, given a graph. If it, if we will use a vertical line test, if it touched the vertical line test once, that is a function. And given an ordered pair, if there's no repetitive number on the domain, so it is a function. So those are the points that you need to remember for you to identify if the given function or if the given relation is a function or not. Another thing is, Domain are always the X value or the first number in ordered pair or the first numbers on the mapping diagram or the X value on the graph. Range are the Y values on the graph, the second number in an ordered pair and all the second or Y values on the mapping diagram. Hope you've enjoyed learning and you've learned a lot on this video. Don't forget to subscribe, comment if you have questions, and please share it for those friends or students that you know that you're taking Algebra 1. And let me know if you have a requested topic for the next video. Hello there, as we believe that there is no retention in learning if we will not apply what we have learned. So now let us play the game, time to climb under near pads. There you go, it's time to climb by near pads. Let's play the game, come and join us. Let us choose a character and let's start the game. There you go. Let's play it. Number one question. Is this a function? If we will throw a vertical line test in each line on the graph, if we will throw a vertical line test on the graph, it will touch the graph once only so therefore this one is a function yippee <laughs> let's climb the mountain question number two identify the domain identifying the domain in here it is a closed stack so therefore it is a bracket negative one and negative two so it stopped in negative two and this one is a parenthesis since it is an open dot so we have one two three four so negative two and then positive four parenthesis 
So we have a bracket, then parentheses. Yippee! <laughs> nice job. Let's climb the mountain. Question number three. Is this a function? What do you think? This, uh, what do you think? Is this a function? Yes or no? So if you will draw a vertical line test, it will touch the graph, the ellipse one, twice or more than one. So therefore, it is not a function. So not a function. Right. Good job. Let's climb up and up and up. Question number four. What are the range on the graph? So they are asking us for the range. So therefore we're focus, we need to focus on the Y axis. Y axis from the origin to positive four. One, two, three, four. So zero to positive four. Zero to positive four, there you go. Perfect, we got it right. Next question, please. Question number five. We'll need to identify the domain on the given graph. So domain, that means we're just focusing on the x-axis since it, we're looking for the domain. And it has an arrow. Arrow means infinite. So it will expand on both left and right side of the Cartesian plane. So therefore, the positive and the negative infinity will be the correct answer. But writing them properly, least to highest, will have the negative and positive one. Good job. Yippee, almost on the tip of the mountain. Last question for number six. We'll find the reasonable dominant range on the given problem. Tara's car travels about 25 miles in one gallon of gas. She has between 10 to 12 gallons of the gas in the tank. So in every one gallon, Tara's car can travel 25 miles. So 10 and this one. So I think this one because 25 times 12 is 300. So let's click it. Good job, you got it right. Almost time, it's almost time, okay. There you go, we got it perfectly. Nice work, so congratulations. Hope you've enjoyed the game. We're on rank one, yippee. <laughs> Next one, since this video, this recorded video is a almost one hour of video now we we're going to now we're going to have a self rate so rate yourself okay you were going to rate yourself you may rate yourself on the comment box if you want um here is the criteria do the self rating by the topic identifying the dominant range given a graph and determining if the given relation is a function or not what is the level of your understanding on the lesson? So here are the criteria. 95% to 100%, you are an expert. 80 to 94%, you have a solid background on it. 60 to 79%, you have a basic understanding. And zero to 50%, you are totally green or totally confused and don't know what's going on. Okay, don't forget to include and write a reason in at least two sentences why you deserve the points or any question that you still have in your mind about the lesson. We can say since we did a great job, we can say 100%. So because, okay, because we answer, okay, we've answered all the questions, right? Questions, right? And we got the objective by identifying the domain and the range given a mapping diagram scattered or ordered pair and graphs. We also determine the relation if if it is a function 
or not a function. See you again on the next video. is all about identifying the domain and range given a graphs. <laughs> Our objective is at the end of this lesson, we're going to identify the domain and range given a graph in a relation. Let's proceed. So we have four given example. As you can see, we have a line graph and parabola the lesson we're going to identify the domain and range on the given graph and we can determine if the given relation is a function or not since we have this lesson or concept on the previous lesson you may go back and watch that lesson before you can proceed on this one as part of a review but wait let us first define those four words relation Relation is a set of two values. In type scenario, we have a lot of given of relations. So like example, a student and teacher is a relation. Mother and daughter is a relation. Mom and dad is also a relation. Um, pen and paper are also relation. So as much as we have two sets of values, they are considered those sets of values as a relation. Mm -mm. It is confusing. So let us have a definition of a function. So a function is a set of value of x in which in every value of x, there is a value of y. So there is only one value of x for every value of y that will be considered as a function. So if there are more than two values of x on a given relation, it is not considered as a function. So we'll give more example later. For you to visualize, uh, how can we identify if the given relation is a function or not using a vertical line test? Next definition or next key term we have the domain. Domain are all sets values of x in which you can see them on the x coordinate or x axis. And then we have the last key term, which is the range. Range are all values of y in which you can see them in y axis or y coordinates. So those are all the terms that we need to know first before we can proceed on this lesson. Take note, at the end of this lesson, we will be able to identify the domain and range on the given graph and determine if the given graph is a function or non-function. Let us proceed. Just check this one out. There you go. Identifying the domain range on the given graphs. You can see on the graphs an open dot, close dots, and an arrow. Before we will start on this one, let us first have a recap. If you remember the inequality symbol during first quarter, we already covered this one. So let us have first a review about those open dot, close dot, and arrows. You can see a close dot in a graph. We're going to use a symbol of parentheses when we are going to identify the domain and range. And then if you see, if you will see a close dot, a, a close dot or highlighted dot, we're going to use a bracket. Okay, for our dominant range. Remember this. And the other one, if you will see an arrow on both ends, we're going to, those are the brackets, curl brackets, and the sharp edge bracket. Okay, open dot means that if you see a number with an open dot, that means that number is not included or part of the solution. While it is a closed dot, that means that number is still included on the sets of solutions. And infinite means... Arrow means, and arrow means infinite, okay, infinite. It's either infinitely going right, going left, up or down, okay? That's the meaning of the arrow. Let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. Remember this stuff. Okay, so for number one, take note. Let us have this one in here. If you can still see this one, open dot. Open dot below, I will just throw them. Open dot is a parenthesis. Okay, and then close dot. 
close that it is a bracket and then arrow means infinite for the infinite we can use the symbol of infinite this is the symbol of infinite or are all real numbers okay those are the symbol that we use in mathematics let us proceed now for number one we're going to identify the domain how can we identify the domain so to identify the domain in number one i will use red font for the domain and blue font for the range okay for the domain, we're looking for the value of the x. So focus only on the on the horizontal axis or x-axis. Okay. So on graph of number one, on the graph of number one. Okay. So let us use a red marker so that you can see it. On the graph of number one, so we're focusing on the x-axis. It stopped in here and it stopped also in here. That means all these points are included on the solution. Yes, yes, yes. Yep, yep, yes, yes. Including this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. But not this one because this one is out of the line. Not included on the line anymore. So we'll stop in here. So all these points are included or part of the solution of the X. However, we will not write all these numbers. So we will just count from the beginning. So we'll start with the right uh, left side of the X axis from the negative numbers. So we have negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven. So we stop in negative seven. Remember that if it is a close that, since it is close that, we would use a bracket. And then we have negative seven. Then we'll stop. We will start. Remember that in writing um, the or the domain and the range, we're following the order from least to highest. Now we're going to write the positive number. We have one, two, three, four, and five. So we stop in five since it is an open dot. Okay, an open dot. We're going to use a parenthesis. So that is how we write domain given a graph now let us now use and find let us now find the range now let us now find the range the range so the range stop in here so it stop in here and also it stop in here again in writing the sets of values uh, in writing the sets of the numbers we'll start from least to highest so we'll start we start on the negative one negative part of the y-axis so we'll start on the negative part of the y-axis so we have negative one negative two and negative three say so, and it is a close that that means we will use a bracket oopsie we're going to use so it is a bracket so we have negative three and then where did we stop on the positive one positive one and it is a open dot so let me just so negative three and positive one so we use a bracket and parenthesis since we have a closed dot and open dot now let us test if it is a function so yesterday we did this one so we will use a vertical line test by making a vertical line in all okay in all um graph if it touch the graph once only that means it is a function so every vertical line that we did the green line it touched the blue graph once only so that means is it a function or not very good. It is a function. So we can say, we can write, yes, it is a function. <laughs> okay, so let's have the second graph. For the second graph, we have on both ends, we have, on both ends, we have close that. So therefore, we will use a bracket on both ends, both ends, okay? And then we will start on the negative side so these are also included okay and then we'll stop on the positive side okay again domain we're looking for the x 
Okay, so we we'll, this one start on negative one, two, three, four, five, six on negative six, and it end up into one, two, three, four, five, six positive six. So that is how we write the domain given the graph. Now we're going to identify the range. The range we're focusing on the y-axis, so up and down. So we're going to highlight this one since the minimum value of the graph from the y-axis is on the origin. And then the maximum value is this one, the maximum point. Okay, so we will now start with zero. Take note, what kind of bracket that we're going to use? Parenthesis or bracket? Yeah, the bracket the with the edge one. Okay, so we will use a bracket on both sides since it is. Since it is a closed dot. So we'll start with the lower number, which is zero on the origin. So zero. And then stop with one, two, three, four, five, six. With positive six. Okay, so that is the range. Now let us now uh, use the vertical line test to identify if the given graph is a function or not. So we will draw a lots of lines. So every vertical line test touched the blue graph with exactly one point. So therefore, it is a function. So it is a function. Function, function, function. Next, on the third graph, we're, again, we're going again to focus on the x-axis first. And then we start with this one. Miss, it is an arrow and it doesn't have a close dot or open dot. What are we going to use? So we're going to use the parentheses to identify the domain and the range. So again, we'll start for the minimum value or the lowest value. It starts with the origin, which is zero. And then look at the arrow. The arrow means infinite, okay, infinite on the positive side of the x-axis, going to the right. If it is going to the right, it is positive, okay? So that means this graph, it expands infinitely okay, from zero to infinitely so it will not stop that is the meaning of the arrow so the meaning of that that all the positive real numbers are included on the domain so we can write positive infinite number or you may also write uh, positive real numbers all real numbers okay question about that if there's no question, we'll proceed on the range. So for the range, okay, if you imagine it, the graph is infinitely extended to the right and infinitely extended going up and down, okay? So if it is infinitely going up and down, that means all negative numbers on the y and all negative or positive numbers on the y-axis are included. So the range... We can say that the range, negative infinite number and positive infinite number are included in the range. Because as the graph going to the positive side of the x, it is also expanded going up and going down. It's like a mouth of the alligator as much as we're opening it. Okay, We're also extending going down and going up. Okay, so that means negative numbers on the y-axis, on the y-axis, and going up and going down are all included. All negative numbers and positive number on the y-axis are included on the range on that graph. Now, let us have a vertical line test. If you're going to draw a vertical line, take note of this one. Look at it. One of our vertical line, two... And three vertical line touch the graph more than one. So if it is more than one, is it a function or not? Perfect. It is non-function or it is not a function because it touched the vertical line test more than one. Oh my God, just to remember what you have learned on the previous video. Very good. Next, let us have this one. This if I'm not mistaken, this is the graph of polynomial function on the fourth one. 
So let us first focus on the domain, on the x value, on the x value. There is an arrow in here. An arrow means if as much as the graph is going down, it is also extended from left to right. It is expanding from left to right. Okay, that means all positive numbers and all negative numbers on the x are included. As much as the graph is going down, 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 it is expanding from left to right. So that means, <laughs> that means on the domain, okay, we'll start with negative from least to highest. We have negative infinite numbers on the x and the positive infinite number on the on the x. So those are the domain for the x-axis. Okay. As much as the graph is going down, it is also expanding from left to right. Okay, just imagine that the graph is moving downward. It is also expanding from left to right. Next, we're going to identify the range. So you're going to focus on the y-axis. So we have a maximum point in here, which is 10. But we're focusing first on the lowest from the negative number. Remember that we're writing them in an ordered pair. Proper way is from least to highest. Again, we will use parentheses. So if you're going to imagine the graph, it has an arrow. So that means it is moving, 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 moving down, 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 down because of the arrow infinitely moving down. So it means that all negative Y values, all negative Y values are included on the domain. So it is negative infinite for the Y and there is a maximum point on the positive y, which is 10 in here. So we're going to have a positive 10, okay, for the maximum point of the range. Question, so that is how we identify the domain and range in different kinds of graph. And last question, is this graph is a uh, function or not? So I just mentioned it a while ago. It is a polynomial function. So every vertical line test, if you're going to pass the vertical line test on that graph, it touched that graph only once, okay? So that means it is a function, okay? Hope that you've learned on this video. Remember that if there's no application on what you have learned, there is no retention in learning. So make sure that you will do your activity given by your teacher. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you again on the next video. Bye.